Just a reminder, as Mark mentioned in our previous video, we are looking to give away a free eShop download code for a game each month for the subscriber who leaves the most thought-provoking comments down below. Some things in life just seem like a perfect fit for each other. Jelly and ice cream, peanut butter and jam. It's peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, way yeah, way yeah. Posh and Bex, Fred and Wilma. Some gaming genres seem to fuse together perfectly too. Well, what about a mix between an open world Metroidvania and pinball? Wait, did he just say pinball? I hear you ask. Yes, he did. Does it work? Let's find out. Hi, this is Glenn at Switch Up. Many thanks to Team 17 for this review copy. Yoku is a dung beetle, on his way to the glorious island of Mokamana to begin a new life as a postman on this tropical paradise. But once he arrives, he finds that troubles are brewing and sets off to save the island from catastrophe. The graphics are whimsical, with a large cast of interesting characters and well thought out locations on show. One of the things I like most about this game is the rich and varied colour palette used by the developers. One minute you are traversing lush, vibrant green hills, whilst a beautiful blue waterfall cascades down past you, and the next you are basking in the glow of burnt oranges and yellows in a delightful autumn scene, only to then be climbing a snow-covered mountain seconds later. The backgrounds have a blurred look about them that really helps to add a level of depth perception, and the various shades of colour and use of shadow really help to bring the environments to life. The whole thing looks like it has been coloured using pastels and really stands out. The opening cutscene would give Nintendo's own Kirby games a run for their money in terms of the creative graphical style and the strong colours used. Some may find the graphics a little basic, and I suppose in some respects it's nothing that Rayman games or the newer Donkey Kong countries weren't already doing a console generation ago. But there is something truly captivating about a game that makes full use of a strong and vibrant colour palette that really brings a game world to life and the game is genuinely charming. Graphics receive 17 out of 20. The tone is set by the music as soon as you turn the game on, with the title screen's song being extremely catchy and would not be out of place in a Disney film. I could quite easily imagine this song playing over a scene from The Lion King and not seeming out of place at all. It's such a cheery song and made me smile as soon as I heard it. The in-game music is very varied between each environment you visit. and I am very impressed with how many different scores run through the game. Some of the music is so chilled out and gave me a bit of a Donkey Kong Country vibe, especially in the Arctic section. All of the melodies are of a high quality and they complement the graphics nicely and music receives 17 out of 20. Yoku's Island Express is an open world adventure game with a unique twist, which I will cover fully in a moment. You move from location to location, speaking to various characters who may ask you to complete a task for them or advise you on where you need to go next. You will then have this place marked on your map and off you go. Trouble is that sometimes you will find your path blocked by various environmental problems and must overcome them in order to move forward. This is where the Metroidvania part comes in, in that you will find or be given items that will help you pass the problem in the same way you would earn a power-up or a door key in a Metroidvania game. In terms of the way this game works, it most reminded me of Toki Tori 2 for those of you that have played that game. Whereas in a Metroid game, your map is split into squares on a grid, with each room being a certain amount of squares, and thus helping you know where to go next, in this game, much like Toki Tori 2, your map is a lot more vague. You can see the general direction you need to go, but you don't have any real sense of how far away you are. You just walk in the general direction of the marker on your map until you hit an obstacle obstructing your way, and then look for an alternative route, or find a solution to the problem. This can make navigation a little confusing at times, and also makes your map far less essential than in some other games of this nature. The unique twist mentioned earlier is that this game fuses the adventure game formula with a pinball style mechanic. 
Your character cannot jump and, being a dung beetle, pushes a large ball around with him. Around each environment are a variety of bumpers and flippers coloured blue and orange. You can use these to hit the ball your character carries and fly it around the level, reaching parts that you would otherwise not have been able to. Using the correct flipper or bumper and timing these correctly is the only way you will reach where you need to go. This is a very interesting idea and I love when developers try something new to mix things up a bit. Sometimes the flippers will be used just to move on through the level, whereas others you will be locked into an area that basically becomes a pinball machine and will not be able to get out until you have collected all of the symbols that unlock the door. Whilst I found these parts perfectly enjoyable, there was the occasional moment where you could not get to where you needed to and I could imagine that some people may get stuck here for a while if they were not used to the flipper mechanics of pinball and in this instance these parts may become frustrating. It also must be said that having most areas boil down to a quick game of pinball in order to progress could be quite repetitive to some people but the game does do a good job of spreading these sections out in between the exploration sections and even mixes them up a bit by having things such as multiple sections on occasion. There is also fruit scattered throughout the island and this works as your currency. You can use it to pay to unlock new bumpers which will then enable you to access new areas or find some of the game's secrets. You can also pay to unlock the fast travel system to make backtracking a little less tedious. You find wallet upgrades as you progress which enable you to hold more fruit. It's an interesting concept to take a genre like adventure games that can be played for hours at a time and mix in something like pinball that is more of a short burst type game. I have to admit though, it does work. It's not perfect and it does affect the pace of the game sometimes, but it's nice to see a novel idea being tried and gameplay gets 16 out of 20. The controls in Yoku's Island Express are nice and responsive and work very well. You move with the left stick, blow your horn with the A button, use the ZL button to activate blue bumpers or flippers and the ZR button to activate orange ones. The Y button opens up your inventory and X your map. Most importantly, the flipper controls when in the pinball sections are as responsive as they need to be and the ball mechanics do not feel too floaty. Considering that the pinball is not the main part of this game, it's nice to know that they got these parts feeling just right and controls receive 16 out of 20. Yoku's Island Express costs £15.99 or $17.99 on the Nintendo eShop and there is a physical version of the game scheduled to release in around June time. The adventure is of a decent length and is a lot of fun to play through. There are some collectibles strewn throughout the game for you to try and uncover as well as some secret areas should you want to 100% complete the game. It is not a game with instant replay value, although the journey is fun enough that I would certainly return to it once I had forgotten the game's secrets later down the line. The higher digital price point brings higher production values with beautiful visuals and some lovely music, and overall value gets 14 out of 20. To conclude, Yoku's Island Express is a bit of a breath of fresh air on the Nintendo eShop where retro roguelikes seem to have become the order of the day. It's such a charming game with a lot of heart and an interesting twist that works very well. I would highly recommend you give this one a thought if you are looking for anything a little different and it receives a switch up score of 80%. Many thanks as always for watching, please remember to leave a like on the video if you like what you saw and heard and keep it switch up for all things switch all the time and as always happy gaming.